Okay, back on still page two, what are we on? 223. Um, and we are gonna finish off this page. So if you remember, the equation that we're dealing with is x squared plus y squared equals z squared. We're looking at traces, which are just take a 3D figure and slice it up. So I don't know if anyone still plays this game, but the game Fruit Ninja used to really just be about finding traces of things by slicing them. Um, you would figure out like, you know, the slices, the, the traces of most fruit are actually circles. Circles are really popular cross sections of things. Um, okay, so let's see, traces parallel to the x, z plane. So that's y equals zero. So that's why all of these are y equals some number. So let's do this. These are gonna look a lot like, whoa, the thing that just scrolled past, right? So we get x squared plus four equals z squared. And we rearrange that, z squared minus x squared equals four. Then we divide by four, so we get z squared over four minus x squared over four equals one. And that's a hyperbola. So x equals y is negative two and z equals. So z has to go with secant because it's first in the hyperbola and we're using the Pythagorean identity secant squared minus tan squared equals one, which is usually tan squared plus one equals secant squared, but you rearrange it for hyperbola. So go with two secant of t, two tangent of t. And as I previously mentioned, I'm not really saying what t can be. Uh, I'm gonna go with all reals for most of these. You definitely don't need all reals to get an entire hyperbola, um, but for sort of simplicity or uh, just to save us a little bit of time, to be honest, uh, I'm skipping that part. So this will give me, this one's a little bit easier. What, x squared plus one is z squared. So that's just z squared minus x squared equals one. And that's nice about this is that the rest of them we can do by symmetry. Y is negative one, Z is. So Z is gonna go first, so it is the secant of T. X is gonna therefore be the tangent of T. You could use cosecant and cotan. I think that's weird. Um, but you know, if that's what you like to do, go for it. I will pretty much never do that. Now we get to use symmetry, so x is going to be the tangent of t, y is going to be 1, z equals the secant of t. I think that my handwriting gets worse near the bottom because I'm trying to, I'm like falling off my desk. Probably just excuses though. All right, so x equals y equals 2, z equals, so I know that this will be 2, secant of t, and I know that this will be 2 tangent of t. And there we go. So what you should do, bust out GeoGebra, graph all of those. Actually, I mean, it'll really slow down uh, the GeoGebra sketch. But if you put all of these in, which will take a little while, unless you figure out how to make a sequence of curves, um, you'll see this really neat like wire mesh version of the cone. Very cool. Also, you can just graph, um, you can just type in x squared plus y squared equals z squared. GeoGebra won't mind that. And then you'll see it looks different depending on how you graph it though. Like, obviously you're just graphing traces if you graph any of the traces, um, but still, give it a shot. I think it's neat. Okay, so what about if we're in the coordinate planes? Well, one of these we actually inadvertently found when we graphed the uh, first problem on the page so if we're in the xy plane, we know that z equals zero. If z equals zero, we have x squared plus y squared equals zero. That's weird. The only solution to that is zero, zero, zero. So it's like a degenerate case of cutting a cone with a plane. That's sort of interesting. What about xz plane? So that's gonna be y equals zero. If y equals zero, we get x squared equals z squared. I'm gonna do a weird thing. I'm gonna bring um, x squared to the other side. So I'm gonna say uh, z squared minus x squared equals zero. I'm gonna factor that z plus x, z minus x equals zero. So I'm gonna get 
z equals negative x, z equals x. But I should really parameterize these. I don't really want to, um, but I really should. So if I said like z equals x, right? So always do uh, the most expeditious thing, right? So we're gonna do the fastest thing we can here. So y is equal to zero, uh, x is equal to t, and then z is also equal to t. If I wanna parameterize z equals negative x, I would say x is equal to t and z is equal to negative t, and then I would get it. So it looks like parameterizing lines, not gonna be that bad. Um, they're basically the same as what you get in two dimensions. So let's do the yz plane is uh, x equals zero. So I get y squared equals z squared. I'm gonna do the same sort of thing. I'm gonna say, uh, you know what I'll do on this one? I'm gonna say that therefore uh, z is equal to, uh, what is z equal to? Well, actually if I do that, I don't wanna do this. I was gonna do like a square root thing, but then I gotta talk about absolute value and like, I don't wanna do that. So z squared minus y squared equals zero. So you kind of know you get z equals y or you get z equals negative y, which we could parameterize in virtually the same way. Um, for example, I could say x is zero, y is t, and z is therefore t or I could do the negative one, either way. All right, I'm gonna cut this video here because I don't actually know what's on the next page. I don't know if it's relevant to this. I mean, it's all relevant, but I don't know if it's like a continuation or not. So I'm gonna stop here and I will be back in another video.